I bought the cheapest Wi-Fi 7 router on the market, and we're gonna test it against a Wi-Fi 6E router. This is the TP-Link Archer BE550 Wi-Fi 7 router. This router boasts 9,300 megabits per second of total bandwidth, but that's not the case. But more about that later in the video. But what are we testing the BE550 against? This is the Asus RT-AXE 7800 Wi-Fi 6E router. And good news, we've already tested this router for the past six months and it performs well. But we'll talk about that later with the speed tests. So we chose the TP-Link BE550 because of the affordable price and it has all the features we could possibly need, except maybe a 10 gig LAN port or SFP plus support. But to be honest, those features are just overkill for our current home networking needs. The BE550 comes with five 2.5 gig ports, one WAN and four LAN, which means we can upgrade our one gig fiber to two gig fiber and the BE550 can handle it with no problem. And this router also includes USB 3.0 for different networking applications like sharing files or a printer. Full disclosure, we bought this router with our own money. The price we paid for the BE550 was $269. And we got a sweet $20 discount on top of that. And as a bonus, one of our amazing Patreon supporters gifted us a $100 Amazon gift card. Shout out to Gerald Lachlan. High five. So we paid a total of $170 for this router. So even if this router sucks, we're only out 170 bucks. <laughs> At first glance, the BE550 looks more like a Bluetooth speaker than a wireless router. It's basically a standard rectangle box with some dot matrix lights on the front. That would be kind of cool having a Bluetooth speaker and a wireless router all in one. The size of this router is much smaller than the older and more expensive BE800 and BE900 routers. And all connections are on the back. This router has no external antennas. All six Wi-Fi antennas are internal. So the BE550 will fit in most areas. The BE550 has some pretty good ventilation at the top and at the bottom. And just a heads up, there is an internal fan, but it's very quiet. This router is powered with a standard 110, 240 volt power adapter. And one more thing to note, this router is not mountable unless you wanna get creative and use zip ties or Velcro straps. The BE550 has a ceiling bandwidth of 2.5 gigabits per second and the fastest speed you can get on any connected devices, wired or wireless, regardless of how capable the Wi-Fi 7 standard is. Your best ISP plan for this router is two gigs. Because if you go to a three gig plan, you'll be wasting a half a gig of speed. The TP-Link BE550 is labeled as a tri-band BE9300. The BE signifies the Wi-Fi 7 standard and the 9300 is the router's combined Wi-Fi bandwidth of 9300 megabits per second. However, if you add up all three bands, the 2.4, the five, and the 6 gigahertz band, the total bandwidth is 9,214 megabits per second. So TP-Link did round up. And to be honest, those speeds are just not gonna happen with our current ISP speeds, networking hardware, and end devices. And this is probably true for your situation as well. Also, there's just not that many Wi-Fi 7 compatible clients as of April, 2024. However, the newer Samsung S24 phones are all Wi-Fi 7 compatible, as well as the S23 Ultra. But as of today, Samsung has not enabled Wi-Fi 7 on the S23 Ultra, and I'm not sure why. And one more bit of good news, if you plan on buying a laptop in 2024, then you'll probably have a Wi-Fi 7 chip in it, thanks to the Intel BE200 card. But all devices prior to 2024 are not Wi-Fi 7 compatible, and that's billions of devices. So Wi-Fi 7 speeds are theoretical for most situations. Let's take a quick look at the TP-Link web interface. This interface is robust with a ton of features, including VPNs, dynamic DNS, port forwarding, QoS, parental controls, and TP-Link Home Shield Basic, which is free. However, Home Shield Pro will set you back $6 a month, which includes some added features. So now let's get to the fun part, the all important speed tests. All tests were performed the same with each router. I didn't have any computer-based Wi-Fi 7 end devices during my testing, so the numbers on the chart will reflect Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E clients and end devices. On both wireless routers, I tested each band individually. The 2.4, the 5, and the 6 gigahertz bands. I tested 10 feet away with clear and direct line of sight to the router, and then 40 feet away with no line of sight to the router, basically in this room. Each test was performed three times, and I took the middle speed as the average because wireless speed tests can vary quite a bit. Also, I did wired speed tests for both routers. And once again, each test was performed three times and I took the middle speed as the average. Additionally, I did a wired speed test on my PS5 
And lastly, I'll show you some comparison data from different sources that include NAS performance read and write times and other additional speed tests. And all of this data will give us a clear picture of what Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E can do for your home network. So here are the results from the Wi-Fi 7 versus Wi-Fi 6E speed tests. The BE550 performed the best at 10 feet with all the bands the 2.4, the 5, and the 6 gigahertz bands. With a clear line of sight to the router at 10 feet, the BE550 had lower latency and super fast download and upload speeds. The BE550 averaged about 550 megabits per second download and 700 megabits per second upload. And average latency was around 15 milliseconds. And additionally, I did a 20 feet away with clear line of sight to the router and all the numbers were nearly the same. The BE550 performs very well at close range very impressive. However, the Asus router performed better at longer distances, especially at the 40 feet range with no line of sight to the router. The Asus router had the faster speeds on the 5 and 6 gigahertz bands. This could be due to the fact that the router has six external antennas and the BE550 does not. Strangely, however, the BE550 had lower latency on all the bands and performed better on the 2.4 gigahertz band. And the BE550 performed better on the wired speed tests. The BE550 had 944 megabits per second download and 948 megabits per second upload. Once again, we did three speed tests each and took the middle speed as the average. And one thing to note, these speeds do exceed my ISP's max speeds. And this could be due to the 2.5 gig WAN and LAN port. And the wired speed test for the Asus router was a little bit lower than the BE550, but not by much. Let's go ahead and look at some independent research I found on both these routers. To be clear, they labeled the BE550 as the BE9300, but they are the same router. With this additional information, you can see the NAS performance, the read and write times are pretty impressive. The BE550 performance is very impressive, especially at this price range. So with all this information, which router and router standard is the best for your home network? Wi-Fi 7 or Wi-Fi 6E? The bottom line is the BE550 is perfect for a small home network that wants to future-proof their networking needs. And when I say small home, that's around 1,500 square feet, like an apartment, condo, townhome, or small single-story home. Anything larger will require the more expensive BE800 or BE900 router. This router will optimize your wired and wireless speeds, and the USB 3.0 will provide fast read and write times for your NAS or media server. The Asus router is a very capable Wi-Fi 6E router and is quite a bit cheaper than the BE550. If you're on a strict budget and live in a large home, then the Asus router would be your best choice. Neither of these routers will work for a two-story home unless you utilize the mesh options, and that requires additional mesh compatible routers, which means more money. And speaking of money, TP-Link offers HomeShield Pro for $6 a month, which is $71 a year. This subscription service offers additional features. And I'm not a fan of subscription services for home networking equipment. It's actually pretty annoying. TP-Link should offer all the features without the subscription services. These Wi-Fi 7 routers are very expensive and paying more money to get all the features seems a bit dirty. TP-Link should get ahead of the game and get rid of those annoying subscription services. All the other companies like Netgear, Asus or Linksys, all of them had those annoying subscription services. And TP-Link could set themselves apart by getting rid of them. And they could market their products as subscription free. And consumers would love it. And TP-Link would sell a lot more routers and networking hardware, just saying. But the big question is, which Wi-Fi standard should you choose for your home network? Wi-Fi 7 or Wi-Fi 6E? Wi-Fi 7 does offer greater improvements over Wi-Fi 6E, but for most people who are upgrading from Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E makes the most sense. It's plenty fast to handle gigabit class internet or even 2.5 gig internet. Besides the speed improvements, it's much better at handling a large volume of devices compared to Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. And the additional 6 gigahertz band will help avoid interference on the 2.4 and five gigahertz band, especially if you live in a dense location like a big city. And as I mentioned earlier, Wi-Fi 7 routers are still very expensive as of 2024 and will probably remain so till 2025. The BE550 is the cheapest Wi-Fi 7 router on the market, priced at 269. And remember, it's gonna be a while before we have a decent amount of Wi-Fi 7 available clients like laptops 
or phones. The reality is Wi-Fi 60 is plenty for most households and is the cheaper option. If you're gonna be upgrading a bunch of your tech devices like laptops and phones and you want a multi-gig wired connection, Wi-Fi 7 is the choice for future-proofing and allowing you to make the most of your internet connection. All TP-Link Wi-Fi 7 routers will be listed below at the best prices you can get. And if you're in the market for a Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E router, check out this video right here, my top five wireless routers for 2024. And with that guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And for God's sakes, smash the bell icon. And I'll see you in the next video real soon. High five. Peace.